Uh, what else do we have to say on this? You guys, help me out. Give me some suggestions. Like how do you keep the like the tension? I guess like yeah. How do you braid around. those roses? Um, so it's, not, it's not just like oh, they're gonna get married or they're gonna fall in love. Well, um, one way is the love triangle, <coughs> which is you introduce <coughs> another um, romantic interest, which is almost as uh, as desirable to the to the reader. You want it to generally be almost. Um, or you make it equally, and it's like, who will they end up with? The problem with that is, um, with the types of stories that we're telling, um, if you make the romance the most important thing about a character, it can get out of hand really quickly, for you as well as for the reader. Meaning, um, if you know, the girl in the story is you know, supposed to be saving the world, but the, lo the, the love triangle becomes the most important thing, then in a lot of ways, you're undermining your own story. It's OK to have a love triangle in there. But you still want your characters to be real, to be people. Um, and so, yeah. So love triangles, one. Um, you know, there's going to be lots of, you, you can plot it like you do any plot sequence. Like I said, the goal is two characters get together. They hook up at the end. Well, what can interfere with that? What interesting things can happen? What can we find out about the two of them that, like I said, when you're building a character, what can you find out about a character that, um, that will not make them fit the role they're to be in? Well, what can you discover about two characters that would make them impossible to, to get together, but then make us want them to anyway? Do try to make sure, hey, do you want this chair right here? Yeah, actually, I was thinking Yeah, hey, yeah this one right there. This chair. Yeah. Um, do try to make them fit together so that um, they don't get together just because, and this is, this is a common problem in romances, the male protagonist and the female protagonist. Therefore, they must get together. Um, do make things about them complement one another. Um, and you can do this by either the opposites attract method, which is holes that the, one, that the one have, the other one fills, and vice versa, so they're good for each other. And that can actually work. Or they have similar likes and interests, and so they, um, they enhance one another when they're together. Doing either one of those is fine, but do try to make sure that that happens for your romances. Too often it's just assumed that they will get together, and that's what you were talking about. They're getting together because of course they're going to get together because there's exactly one male protagonist, age 17, and exactly one female protagonist, age 17, and everyone else is either married or way too old or way too young. Except for Night's Tale, where he totally should have ended up with the Flexman. Yes. Well, no, he shouldn't have, because they wouldn't bat together, but anyway. He was a doofus. <laughs> you notice in that one they put in a lost love for her so that they could take her off the table as a potential romantic interest. I still love my deceased husband. Okay, no romance for you. They're like any, like, tricks to keep that... Like, kind of like little like plot, plot <coughs> stuff. You can go into that well, maybe. Like, how do you sure. plot a romance? Just like, and then. All right, let's plot a romance. All right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna build this. Uh, let's just go to the show instead of tell, because these are some. The, the reason I'm having so much trouble with this one is these these sorts of things. Like I've told you before, character growth and progress is an instinctive thing for me, um, and it's something I do as I go. And so when I actually write a book, I don't. I say, this is a potential romantic interest. This is also a potential romantic interest. These are, you know, these are connections that could be made at some point in the book. I will often do that. I won't always, but I will often do that. And I will allow the character to grow in the direction that it feels like the match works. And so let's do this. Let's build ourselves two characters. Um, uh, how old are they? 24. OK. Are they the same age? No. OK. Today she's 27, he's 24. All right. I married an older woman, so I'm uh, partial. Um, all right, 27, 24. Um, what is the do that profession? City planner. What's that, city planner? Okay. Let's try not to do a romantic comedy, so let's do a genre thing. So we're going to put urban fantasy, okay? What? <laughs> it doesn't have, the urban fantasy does not have to mean vampires. Sorry. <laughs> you wanted it to be actual fantasy? Like, I don't know. 
<laughs> All right. So she's an urban planner for the fairy world. Yeah. They, well, the you know the um, the hidden world, whatever it is. She's the person who is the liaison when they come and say, you know, we want to be building a new series of uh, of fairy huts on top of this skyscape scraper. Can we get zoned for that? <laughs> um, so she is, you know, urban planner. Okay? And she has to get, like, the proper permits and make sure that there's, like, no psychics living in the house that could accidentally discover the fairy world by, you know, hearing the voices on top or things like that. Um, what's the dude's, uh, dude's uh, profession and or? Detective. Detective? Okay, he's a detective. There you go. You're doing this already. All right, so we've already got one rose braided together, right? He is investigating the fairy world that she, in part, is supposed to keep secret. All right? What's the plot of our book? What's the, what's the capital P plot, the big thing that's happened that, um, that is, is going to drive the whole narrative? Big bad fairy guy, invading lord, lord of fairy world. Okay, big lord of fairy world. So we've got the fairy, haha, -ha, godfather. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a fairy turf war going on um, which is directly related to what she does and it's spilled over into what he does he doesn't know about the, the fantasy world she does um, they met on match.com <laughs> right TM um, ooh, but not by accident. Okay, this is good. What, what, what happened? How, how did they meet? You know, they just have the, you start off with like a normal date and they're like, there's, nothing's going to happen here. And in fact, they have a horrible first date. I heard a quote one time, like, and this can work either way. You can either have like some kind of controlling force pushing them together, but you can also, coincidences are a huge part of romance. Yes, they are. And that's what makes it feel special. Yeah. If, it's not a if there aren't coincidences, then it just goes bland. Very nice. Very nice thing to add. Okay. So they met a match.com. You're saying it's just, it could be just a coincidence that they did. And that's part of what drives this whole story is that, you know, these two different people, we start off with a little bit of his story, we start off with a little bit of her story, and we're like, oh, this, th this thing is happening, this is cool. Meanwhile, they're both living their lives, and they both are wanting, you know, and so they end up on a date together, and that's the first time they interact. It could actually be kind of cool as a end of act one sort of, how, what are these two characters, they meet randomly, you know, you've seen them both browsing profiles online and go on a date together. And during the date, the, um, the fairy gangsters order a hit on one of the two of them. <laughs> um, and suddenly, you know, they order a hit on him and, you know, you could, you could do a very nice reversal where she's an urban planner, but she's, you know, X um, um, anti, you know, fairy gangster, uh, something like that. You know, she's got some powers in the fantasy world, and so tur it turns into a the the tough detective guy has to get protected by the woman in a business suit um, <laughs> to keep him from being assassinated by the fairy gangsters for reasons that they don't know and he knows nothing about all of this he's just been investigating something completely separate but it, it does tie in and so what you suddenly worked into it is a reason they have to be together they were having a horrible first date um, it ended with an assassination attempt and now she by nature of what she is feels like she has to keep him alive he wants to get the heck out of here because she's crazy and her friends that dress up um, like LARPers who tried to kill him are crazy um, and you're laughing because because this is fun. This is going to be a fun story. Now, in this one, this is turning into more romance. And so at this point, I would say I'm not really writing a romance. I want to have a strong romantic element to an interesting story. And so I would start building more personality for each of them separate. And I would start building this fairy gangster war and things and make sure that when we introduce both of them, they have compelling stories and narratives that are aside from the romance that's going to come at them. But this is going to turn into a romance story, um, you know, as one of its main things. Wait, so does the relationship arc have to track the plot arc? Like no, but it works really well to do so. Um, usually, I would say you want it to you want it to kind of be like this. If this is the plot arc, you either want your re relationship arc to go like this, or your relationship arc to go like that. So, you, so you're mirroring them a little bit, um, but what's happening is 
they're expressing true love for each other right before the big climax, um, which they then go, you know, fight together or right after it. Um, and you'll see this happening very frequently in storytelling. So the question is, we've built this. Now we get back to your original question. How do we make this continue to be interesting? This is what you want to know. What, what pl plot cycles can we throw into this that will be interesting and not terribly <coughs> cliche, but will still keep tension going? Prolonging of the gratification of coming together. Yeah. So that can either happen with the characteristic traits, the, the, the character's traits being in kind of conflict. Right. Which can mean a number of things. Like in the name of the wind, it's basically the female just being capricious. Yeah. And then, or it can, but it's really the it's just like the try fail kind of model that makes it interesting, and that's, mm -hmm. it's basically a continuation of them trying to not get, or trying to get together and it not working out. Like or you wanting them to get together yeah. and it do, not working out. The try-fail does work very um, wonderfully for this. So you would build into this, if I were building this plot, I'd say, okay, so let's come, I would come up with, and we don't have time to do this because I want to go to writing groups, uh, but let's come up, you would, I would come up with, you know, three scenes where they start to build a mutual respect and affection for one another by what happens. And then I would build three scenes <laughs> where it goes wrong. Go watch Hitch. You'll find both of these, okay? Uh, Hitch is a great film. Um, and you'll find three scenes where everything kind of goes wrong, and you'll be able to find three scenes where things are going right. And usually what's happening is it's this until we hit this. And it's this until we hit this. Things are going right, things are going right. Oh no, I just fed him shellfish and he's allergic to it and everything's going wrong. Um, and you build up to like the, the, you know, the kind of big one, which is the, I, you have betrayed me. The reason Hitch works well as a romantic comedy is because I feel that it has a stronger um, third act fall apart than most uh, romantic comedies do. Usually it's like, I'm not going to be with you for stupid reasons. And this one, it works because it kind of has been lying to her all along um, about what he does and who he is. And she finds out. And it's a really traumatic thing for the way the story has built it up and so you you do things like that and so he's right you the anticipation of ooh they're coming to like each other no why did that wrench get thrown into it ooh they're coming to like each other no why did you have to mention that your irish ancestors you know slaughtered leprechauns that and she's a you know she 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 studied leprechauns in evil in ex anti fairy gangster school is her like you know thesis on how wonderful they are you know something like that i'm i'm going silly of course on you but um yeah uh that would be your arc for this What's that? And you have little things. <laughs> we do that every time I do one of these in the class, though. If you're like, you need to write this book. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, go for it. Cheers. Um, yeah. That's right. Yeah, fairy gangsters. Of course, I've done all this stuff kind of sillily. Um, but you, you could revise all this. This could go a little bit dark. This could go very, a little bit light. Um, Urban Fantasy has uh, has opportunities for both. So, how hard is it to put a, uh, a romance in when you're totally done? Otherwise, um, it depends on if it means adding a new character or not. Um, if you're done otherwise, my suggestion might be to start to, to do a few things like this, hinting at two characters that you will then use in a sequel to get together. If it's a book that you are planning a sequel for. Um, or do a little false romance or something like that. Um, it's interesting. I had two uh, romances in The Way of Kings, um, the first volume. Um, and both of them I tried to do in some somewhat non-stereotypical ways. The first one, it happens between you know two people in their 50s. Um, and that's the primary romance of the, of the book. And then the other one is a kind of more flighty, realistic teenage romance where it's really one person trying to manipulate the other and they don't know it all along. Um, and um, I felt that the, the, the balance between the two of them, between the, the, the youthful, this is all sunlight and roses, and the we've been around the block before we know about all this stuff was a great contrast for me. Um, and so, but neither of those romances are dominating factors in the novel. And you can put something like that in without them being dominating. 
All right. Kind of like Last question. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of the way humans are wired, like relationships are very mm -hmm. meaningful. Like, yeah. And they just feel like we want them in our stories, but like sometimes they do kind of get to say, like, yeah. isn't there something else that we can care about? That, yeah. Like, do you have any tips on that? <laughs> and there's something. Else, there's so much else you can care about, but we, you know, romance <laughs> is important. Um, it's useful. Most uh, I, I put a romance, I think, basically in every book that I've written, um, in some way or another because relationships are meaningful. But you can do them on such a different scale where you can have them just be very subtle things that, um, that you know maybe in the future these two characters would get together or you can make them a central focus of the book um, or you can, you know, anything in between. Um, what else is there to do? There is, you know, any kind of relationship that you can have. You can have, but the thing is it's gonna break down into archetypes because that's all I have time to tell you right now. But you know, you can have the, the, the young whippersnapper comes to respect the, um, the wise elder, or you can have the wise elder needs to be taught, um, you know, comes to respect the impulsiveness of youth that he has lost and forgotten. Or you can, um, I mean, you can, we can think of hundreds of these, but they're all gonna be basically built the same way, which is why people talk about plots there only being whatever six plots or whatever um, you know number is trendy right now. It's because you you have a hundred different relationships, but you would build the, your plots in one of just a couple of ways if you wanted that romance or that relationship or that aspect to to come to work um, in a way that you know your readers like. Yay, I like that.